No Jumper, coolest podcast in the world. And today I am actually in here with probably one of the most rare interviews I'm ever going to get. Garrett from Revenge. How you doing, man? Good, man. <laughs> uh, I'm high key nervous as fuck. Are you really? Even with yeah. the face covered up, you're still a little nervous. Yeah, I still feel like shaky. <laughs> I mean, we were having this conversation before, so let's just keep it going. There's something very interesting and unique about anybody at this point who's able to build a brand <clears throat> that is really like separate from the the founder you know Mm -hmm. it's like it's it's nowadays it's like every youtuber every rapper everybody has merch Mm -hmm. and now and then you see a brand that manages to sort of crack that and i think you have to be sort of rare in terms of your social media or how much you put Mm -hmm. yourself out there is that something that you've always been pretty in tune with um yeah it's like everything i do on social media especially is like for a reason like there's a purpose behind everything Mm. you know um i feel like early on working with x as well was like a big influence on why i still wanted to be low-key because early on he maybe had like a thousand followers or some shit on uh on twitter Mm -hmm. and you met him back then yeah wow okay yeah and um it was just something that i always it fascinated me like even his name xxx tentacion you know how he said like unknown temptation yeah something about being unknown or just anonymous and i was really into like deep web and like hacking and shit like that oh so, really yeah so i like not that i was doing it or like i know how to do it but it's just interesting to me you know so that kind of takes a big role into like how i try to portray or like try to come off as like a owner or something but mm. it's because something i'm really into you right. know well it's interesting when i look at you guys' instagram it's like you only post every what like every month or two like it's very yeah. occasional yeah. and yeah. it's but like instagram so incentivizes you to just blast the platform with new content every day yeah. and it's like it as a brand as a brand who really wants to build themselves up in a long-term way it kind of takes a lot of self-control to ignore yeah. all that and be like no we're only going to hit you with <clears throat> what we feel and, and also it's very mm-hmm. tempting to just have have your store be 100% in stock all the time. Yeah, yeah. Like, it's the whole thing about just everything being exclusive and then, um, of course, going back on, like, being anonymous is just, like, it's so it's so fun to me because I never really wanted attention or anything. Like, I always wanted to separate myself from, like, the brand as much as possible. Like, because, mm. you know, as much as I put myself into the brand and stuff, I want to keep it separate for, like, from like who I am, mm. you know. I mean, if you're able to still have a relatively normal life, I mean, that's that's huge. If you can get yeah. to the money and like make a contribution or be happy with what you're doing creatively, but you're still yeah. able to walk down the street and not have people be like super concerned. And like, obviously, I'm not even on the furthest extent of it, but I'm sure that mm-hmm. like Kylie Jenner would like to have a billion dollars <clears throat> and not have to live in a prison of fame where she can't go yeah. anywhere or do anything. Yeah, it's not like I. I don't know. It's it's really weird. I'd never like let any of that shit. It's not like I'm huge or anything like that. So I just I still do the same shit every day. I'm still with my same friends, still even working with um, the same people I've worked with since I was like 18, 19 years old. Right. Nothing's changed. Like everything's still the same. Definitely. What? OK, so let's go back to the very, very early stages of the brand. How yeah. much did the brand get going before you even met X or did the brand sort of come into existence because of x so i started off as being x's um designer for his merch oh okay yeah so but but even before that dude like there's just a deep like dark period in my life where okay so after high school um and you went to the high school around here i'm assuming uh no so i grew up in east la okay but i went to like a pretty rich like good high school okay and um Going over there, I never fully felt, like, accepted or just, um, or I never felt like I belonged there. Because uh-huh. being from where I'm from, like, poverty and just, like, not saying I had it, like, really hard. Um, it's just a whole new area. Like, my friends have, like, multi-million dollar houses and shit. And, like, I've never seen them. Like, they have their own room. I have one room with sharing my whole family in this one fucking room. And they don't even know that your way of life exists. Yeah, they have no (laughs) idea. And I'm over there and just seeing all that shit is just like open so much, like opens. Open your eyes to what is out there and how different people are living. Yeah, so after um, high school, 
I had no idea what the fuck I was going to do. Like a lot of people, you know, I feel like a lot of kids are at this point in their life too. And um, you're just clueless and just so lost. And me feeling like this depression and just anger about not, not going to succeed in anything and just feeling all this fucking um, emotion and just really like fucked with my head. And mm. um, so like seven months, I was just alone in my house and just working on shit, trying to fuck around with Photoshop because it was just a passion that I had. So I started messing around with that and I would hit up like people I thought were cool in the industry and shit that I want to work with. I'm pretty sure I've even hit you up. <laughs> like, oh, to design, I wonder to if I got the super shit. old email or super <laughs> old uh, fucking DM or something. You probably, know. you probably have it still in there. Damn. But yeah, I was just hitting up people I thought were cool or anyone who needed help and shit. And um, yeah, I just, I found an artist who was maybe about like a thousand followers or something on Twitter. Uh-huh. And I was just listening to his music on repeat, on repeat, on repeat. And I was like, what the fuck? Like, this guy is insane. And, like, checked out his Twitter, hit hit him with a DM and shit. And um, he's like, yeah, man, like, I like your work. I am I need something for, like, an album cover. And then I sent him some shit and wasn't fucking with it. <laughs> he was like, nah. I'm like, that, this, is, this isn't it. Like, we could probably do better. I was like, fuck, all right, well, my shot is, like, over. And, um... He actually posted a picture of his hand on Twitter. And then I looked at it and I took inspiration from uh, this gang. It's called La Eme. And they have their main logo is their hand. And then it has an M inside uh-huh. of, the, of the handprint. So I was like, oh, shit. Like that. I thought that was pretty cool. So I kind of flipped the concept and I took a picture of X's hand and I photoshopped it, made it look like cool I guess and then I sent it back to him and then all of a sudden he hit me like an hour back like an hour after I hit him and he was like oh shit like this is fire like I'm gonna call you and then got on FaceTime and then it was so that's with. where that one design came from originally yeah. with the handprint graphic yeah 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 wow that's crazy so what uh from there how did you guys continue to work together and when did the idea of like was, was the idea that he want did he tell you i want to have some merch that says revenge or no. did that just come afterwards no so it was just like i was he had a whole he had bad, bad vibes forever before what it is now right and that was like his first merch that me and him like worked on along with a few other people but um the first design we did for his merch was the handprint on the front and then in the back it had a picture of an angel and like a little kid and this old painting and um it said xxx tentacion and then in like the little lightning font that we still use today Mm. yeah but that font i actually got from him because he like put me on that okay yeah so how did you guys so you have that original call with him did you actually Mm -hmm. go out to florida or did you guys meet or did it take a while no so like i said i'm from east la and he was in florida right and um yeah, we didn't fully meet till like we didn't meet in person till maybe like six six months after that. Uh huh. And it was when he came to do the no jumper interview. Okay. Over here. Yeah. But but you weren't there for the interview. You met no. him at a different time during that. Yeah, visit? yeah. It okay. was like during that same week, I think. Okay. Yeah, him and Ski, uh, both came over here, and that was the first time I actually. Where did you meet up with him? It was somewhere we met like at, I think in Hollywood as well. Okay. And then the first thing we did is like. We went to go eat at Denny's and shit. Wow. And I, like, paid for their Denny's. And, like, they're both just like, are you sure? Are you sure? I'm like, yeah. Like, you don't remember what chill. they ordered? Uh, I think <laughs> X got, X? like, a... Moons over he, my hammy? <laughs> he got, like, a burger and fries and shit. And then... <sighs> wow. Real American. Yeah. So yeah. It, that shit was fun, dude. Like, that was my first time just meeting them. Like, it was crazy. Um, X, especially, because... Uh, we had multiple conversations. Like, we were on the phone every single day. He's calling yeah. me. It's, like, 7 a.m. over here. And, of course, it's 10 in Florida. Uh-huh. I'm waking up, like, what? who the fuck is calling me right now? Like, why? And he's like, yo, wake up. I'm like, what? <laughs> he's like, yo, we need to design this shit right now. I'm like, all right, fuck it, let's get it. And it would be like that every day. Right. Like, him just waking, it would be, like, 5, 
6, 7 a.m. And I'm just like tired as fuck. And then we're just working on stuff because right. we want to. But were you solely committed to doing his merch at the time? Or had it already crept into your mind like, you know, at some point I'm going to want to do my own brand? Um, I had always wanted like my own brand since maybe like 12 or 13 years old. Right. But uh, like I didn't fully know what what I wanted to represent, you know? Mm. I didn't fully know what concept or idea like I didn't I didn't have anything tangible to and just a whole it was just uh, the first the first thing I thought of is just I just want something cool and like exclusive mm. you know it's funny though because like the name okay so the just the name revenge though yeah how did that come about exactly because it feels like in a lot of ways that sort of summarized the way that a lot of ex's fans felt uh-huh. towards the world how he yeah. felt towards the world that he yeah. wanted his revenge like you literally said that at certain points yeah there's like kind there's like multiple meanings um like i said the first the first meaning i could really explain is uh through my personal experiences and shit and um me not doing good in school and just always felt like an outcast at my school um i really wanted to like kind of represent those kids or kind of um be an outlet for them saying like just because you're like fucking up right now doesn't mean like you can't get your shit together Mm. you know there's still you could turn all this negative shit that you're going through into something positive Mm. so it's really like as cliche as it may sound like success is the best revenge like that's really what i wanted to do like i've always found that that's like the best motivator for Mm -hmm. me like when i don't feel like i'm actually like up against something it can be very easy to get complacent and when i feel like i'm having to go to war to Mm -hmm. protect i don't know my career or, or my my content or whatever like if i feel like there's somebody i'm really fighting against somebody or something that could be like the biggest motivation yeah it's really just like fighting against people who say you're not going to do shit people Mm. who are counting you out already from the beginning like no you can't do this you're fucking you're a fuck up you should just stay to yourself just go get a job you're not going to do anything you shouldn't pursue your dreams and shit like that and Mm -hmm. i'm 100 percent against that yeah so x gets locked up yeah. And at <clears throat> how does your shit continue? Are you still just working on stuff and talking to him on the phone in jail? Because, like, while he was locked up that time, that's when he really started to blow up. Yeah. Ski, scheme uh, reminded me of that the other day. That he yeah. never, he wasn't really that big. Then he gets locked up and he gets crazy big yeah. somehow. So I was, I had started Revenge. We had put out like two or three hoodies, like a, the main logo mm-hmm. that you see now. And um, it was just with a different back. It didn't have his hand on the back. And um, we had done stuff prior, before he got locked up. And then we were just, I was still calling, or he would call me every day and be like, yo, like, we need to still work on shit. I'm like, just talk to him, see how his mental is and shit. And it was really, it was really hard. Mm. And um, he needed to come up with like lawyer money and legal fees and shit to help, help his situation. Right. So I was like, yo, like, I have like revenge is like we have a few designs that I think are cool um I think we should just run some shit together and we'll just put your hand on the back with our logo right. on the front and then whatever we make like we're just gonna give all to you so you could just handle all that shit and get your ass out right and that's what we did we put out the hoodie and um we put the out mugshot the mugshot team. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. I remember that particular drop. The ex was on the phone with me from jail, being like, "Bro, I need to get this lawyer money. Yeah. Can you please like?" He was asking me to basically just like promote with the revenge URL yeah, in yeah. the intro to a couple of videos and stuff. And I was like, "Yeah, yeah sure." And like, yeah, I, I appreciate you too, like so much for doing that because that helped him and like us a lot. Like, that's so crazy though because I remember at that time too him being like, "Yo, like I'm gonna have my boy send you ten thousand dollars because I appreciate you promoting it." And I was like, "You're locked up. Like I don't need your ten thousand dollars. Just yeah, keep yeah. it. Well, like it's fine." Like, that's funny. but he was like, "Like I just thought it was so weird." I'm like, "You're like 18 and you're offering me ten thousand yeah. dollars and you're in prison." Like, this yeah. is kind of funny. Dude, that was, like, the first time I actually found out his age. I always thought he was so much older. Like, I never had asked him. And then I was like, what the fuck, bro? Like, he's 18. Right. He's 18 years old. It's very, it, like, when you think about it, he's almost like a cult leader type personality. Yeah. Where there's so yeah. many people that he met that were so fascinated by him and so mm-hmm. down to just be a part of whatever was going on. Yeah, him, like, me and him would just have conversations every day. And it wouldn't just be about clothes. It would just be about life in general and shit like that. And he really helped me, like, get through all the fucking depression, like, anxiety and shit like that. He's Mm -hmm. like, no, like, you have to push. And I still carry that 
with me today you know like right. I, I'm a, I was a little bit like that but after working with him and just being around him and shit like it it motivated me a lot too for sure so he gets out of jail and then mm -hmm. do you guys reconnect after that or like what, what was the relationship like because he got signed while he was yeah. locked up all of a sudden he's got money and shit yeah. stuff starts changing um he called me the first day he got out he's like yo we're about to fucking like take over the world and i was like oh like i was just so happy that he got out because i mm -hmm. know what he was going through and like every day like talking to him and shit it was just it was sad like no one wants to no one wants anyone to fucking go through that shit like mm. Um, and so, we weren't we weren't necessarily even sure he was gonna get out anytime soon. Yeah, <laughs> like I was just so happy that he got out. And then um, so he called me. He was like, "Yo, I want you to come to Florida. Um, we need to work on. I'm about to go on tour. I want you to come with me, and we need to work on like the merch and shit for uh -huh. uh, for tour." So that's what I did. Um, I left my house. And my fucking my mom and dad like they didn't want me to go. They're like, "No, like." Um, Did they understand at all the fact that you were selling a shitload of merch at this time and that things were starting to go good? It was, it's hard to explain to them because they're so like old school and shit. Mm. And even when I was starting off, like when I said, um, when I was working on stuff alone um, in my bedroom, just every day, like they didn't fully get it. They're like, why don't you go out and like get a job? Like you need to go back to school and shit. I'm like, no, like I have a passion for this. I know it's going to work. I'm going to do whatever it takes for it to work and mm -hmm. for me to succeed and shit. So me telling him like, yo, I'm going <laughs> to, I'm going to leave and we're going to go to Florida and we're going to make some shit. I'm going to go on tour with them. And then we're just going to go from there. Mm -hmm. And like my mom is like crying, like just calling me like every day, like when you come back, all this shit. But yeah, we ended up going over there um stayed at his house or his apartment at the time and there's like was still the apartment it yeah it's not the house yet okay yeah it was like eight or nine of us over there uh -huh. and it was like producers like uh stain and then uh craig was over there too was it insane what was the vibe like um i would most of the time just be working honestly i'd just be working on my laptop uh -huh. and um yeah, it was it was pretty fried. It was a lot of <laughs> a lot of <laughs> so, drugs, a lot of random fights uh, and shit. Or I don't what? think not so much drug. Like I don't think there's any drugs. I know actually. he was wasn't like, like the biggest cigarettes and shit. He wasn't like the biggest drug guy, but I just assumed that there was probably a lot of people around who were getting all fucked up. Um, no, not really. Like everyone was just smoking cigarettes, and we were really <sighs> just trying to be on our shit. You know. Okay. Yeah, we were just really trying to make the most of whatever platform we have, or like whatever thing we're passionate about whether it's music producing like me with clothes and shit we we're just trying to do the best that we can and it was just like that was like a big part of my life too just going over there and meeting everyone from like members only and shit and um just working every day like really really hard yeah damn so th that whole like so how long between then and you going on the revenge tour you went on that tour right yeah i went on the tour now I've just heard so many stories about how crazy that was. But th was there anything <laughs> like interesting or important that happens in that time period before you guys go on that tour, which became legendary? Um, I don't know, dude. Like I honestly, a lot. Of, everyone loved it, probably, but me. Really? I I really disliked tour because <laughs> the tour was so chaotic. It was so chaotic, and like, cause based off the fact too that of like anxiety and shit, like just being around so many people, and then like having to wake up at 5, 6 a.m., sometimes wouldn't sleep. We'd have to go back on the tour bus. And yeah. then even a couple shows, um, I literally, I remember there's this one show, I forgot, I think it might have been Chicago, that I was so tired that I didn't even get off, like, the tour bus. Like, I just slept the entire time, and mm. I just let my friends help, like, sell the merch and all the shit like that. Because yeah. when you're on tour, it's very much, like, the, the, the craziest, most awake high energy person basically yeah. dictates how everybody else has yeah, to yeah yeah exactly exactly like he'd stay up for days and days and he would probably get maybe like three four hours of sleep on on tour like going to the next city and shit right but other than that he'd just be up working talking like fucking around uh -huh. where <laughs> yeah. were you when he got uh, knocked out on stage um, I was there, but I was at the merch table because I was going back and forth each each like show. I would uh -huh. go get him and like ski clothes, and then I'd go bring it to him before clothes like going to the like, stores. No, no, like, no, like revenge, oh, like merch, because okay. they're like, yo, just give me everything the size, and then I would just go get it. And then um, I was picking up some of the like hoodies and stuff, and then I saw just a bunch of guys just going to the left side of the 
the venue. Right. And I was like, what the fuck? There's like eight people. I'm like, oh, hell no, dude. Like some, some shit's fucked up right now. Yeah. And then I was trying to call his, um, his bodyguard, Jeremy. And all of a sudden I just seen that, uh, that one dude take off on him. I was like, fuck dude. Yeah. It's like everybody's just beating the dog shit out of the one guy. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. That was crazy. And I was just trying to make sure, like I was trying to go over there and see like if everything was okay. I saw him fucking on the floor. I was like, Oh, like this shit is crazy right now. Was that insane after that? Or was it not really that big a deal? Cause it kind of felt like X was just right back to tweeting and being on tour. Like the next day, he, he like, there is no way he was going to stop going on tour. He was like, I'm for sure. He's like, fuck him. Like, I'm going to, I'm going to keep pushing through all this shit. And, right. um, like as, as you should, you know, but, uh, yeah, I, I think very few people would continue the tour after mm. getting that, you know. It was crazy because at the same time that that tour was taking place, I'm pretty sure it was the same time that the whole situation happened with Ski getting jumped yeah. in L.A. Yeah, it was. Which I, I was actually at that show. while oh, that you were at that show. I was at that show. I show up and back, yeah. and uh, all of a sudden I realized, like, so I show up and back, and Ski is already, like, on stage, uh-huh. and all of a sudden I realized there's, like, 20 dudes in back and they're all wearing the same color yeah and they're all not looking too happy and then but so i'm looking at the screen right because yeah. i'm watching ski play and then all of a sudden i see so many motherfuckers run down on them on stage but yeah. i'm in back just watching it play out and i'm like what do we do we like run out by the time we get even close to the stage yeah. everybody is already like completely gone off the stage like they had taking it around back and stuff that was insane yeah that happened i think that was prior uh before us going to that was before us going to san diego oh okay because because it's yeah because it sparked off like i I, and i always felt like ski in a weird way like held that against x because Uh x sort of aggravated that situation by talking super crazy on social media and ski wasn't necessarily like up for starting a war yeah maybe but at the same time like they had each other's back you know Mm. it was going to be there whether they were both going to be there um, for each other, whether they both didn't agree on it or not. But that's the thing is that X was so about his friends yeah. that he took that situation further than Ski probably would have wanted it to go. Because yeah. I still remember right after he got jumped, maybe like a half hour later, I, I thought, I got to call X. I yeah. called X and told him on FaceTime and he just immediately started shaking. Yeah. He couldn't I, even speak. He yeah. couldn't say anything to me. He's just shaking. Yeah, I remember um I was there when I was there with them at the um at X's apartment when Ski got jumped. Right. Over here in LA. And yeah, it was crazy. I remember him just fucking yelling and he I think he might have like broke a finger or something, like punching the door so hard. Whoa. And we thought he was gonna do some crazy shit. So we were all just telling him like don't go outside, like just chill, chill, chill and everything. He was telling was me like, I'm gonna hop on a plane to LA and then like <laughs> his girl at the time or whatever is all hitting me up and she's like, Adam, you have to help me make sure he doesn't go to LA. <laughs> yeah, like, like no he's way gonna violate going, his probation, yeah. he's gonna yeah. be in so much more trouble if he goes to LA. I'm like, How am I gonna stop him from getting on a plane from LA? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. There's a bunch of um a bunch of good people around him too. Like mm-hmm. um um, like Will and Wiljens, I don't know if you uh, know him, but like Wiljens, uh, Wiljens helped. I think he is an audio engineer. Uh-huh. He engineered a lot of his songs and like I think Young Brats and right. um, R.P. Road and shit like that. And then um, Will was actually his like first manager. Mm. Yeah. And they were both they helped. Like when I was over there staying, um, staying in Florida, they really helped me like get through like some tough shit like I was dealing with personally as well like because I didn't fully want to like be there I guess because every day I was just like still with battling anxiety and fucking like not knowing what I'm gonna do next and Mm. and shit like that and they really helped me and they were really there for X as well so um yeah like they they made sure like he was straight like he's not gonna do anything stupid like he's gonna he'll just calm down and think about it tomorrow and shit like that yeah. right he like they both brought him back to being like level-headed and shit well that was nice um okay so that but that tour ends early because basically it was just so chaotic that nobody yeah. could handle it right mm-hmm. what do you do you go back to florida or you go back home uh go back to florida okay go back to florida for a month and um just working over there and just really trying to like I said, see what the fuck is next because no one had a blueprint or no one had like a solid foundation besides like X to mm-hmm. what they're going to do, you know? And um, 
it was just kind of getting to know myself more like what do I really want to do what do I really want to make with revenge and the brand and shit like that mm. and I took a lot of time to myself over there and um some shit happened some like personal shit I was going through as well happened over here and um I had to come back and uh get myself right okay so you had to leave at some point was yeah. this before or after uh the the Jocelyn Flores situation um this was after Jocelyn happened maybe I think I it might have been before tour. How did you know her? Or is there like a connection I, with that whole thing? I, I didn't know her. Um, but like I forgot. I forgot how we actually met. Or I don't know. She was just there at the house one day. And um, yeah, I, I don't know. Just talking about it is just it's crazy to me still. Cause, um, you, didn't, you only knew her for a few days before she passed? Or? Yeah, it was maybe, I think maybe I met her like once. Okay. Yeah, but I would just, I wouldn't really talk to anyone <laughs> besides like people I knew. Right. You know, um, so I'd just be busy by myself, like ducked off somewhere anyway. Cause that shit was crazy for me because like another person in the rap world or whatever kind of like hit me up. I didn't know mm -hmm. who she was or anything, but they yeah. hit me up like, oh, like this girl I know like flew out there to hang out with X. Yeah. And I'm, I was like, oh, whatever. And then a couple of days later, X tells me like, oh, this girl I was really close with passed. Or, yeah. And I'm like, oh, it was that girl that somebody just was telling me about. And like, yeah, I don't know. It's just I, I've always thought that was just such a crazy fucking situation. Yeah, it was crazy. Like, I remember X just I didn't even fully like know her. But when I heard the news, like I, I was like crying, dude, I was like, what the fuck? Like, how can she like take her own life? You know, right. Because you you hear about like suicide and shit like that and you if you have like friends or family who have been through that who've done it and shit like it affects you even just me knowing her for a day mm. you know or two days like it affected me a lot too like i i really care about people too and i like there's a a lot of things that could have just helped her just if maybe someone would talk to her if i could have reached out more like maybe it would just make her feel better just not do that you know mm. but so the the song garrett's revenge that's what it says in the description of the song yeah it says i love you garrett rest in peace jocelyn i will have my revenge upon the world yeah so what, what what's the connection there that he felt the need to start out with i love you garrett in the description of the song i actually don't know i never it's I just never, off the top I never, of his head <laughs> i never fully, i never asked him like he just he called me one day he was like yo like listen to this and at the time, I would always play um, a lot of Nirvana and just like watch a bunch of uh, Kurt Cobain or in interviews and shit like that. Uh -huh. And I would show him. And I think, too, based off the fact that I was so into that at that time, um, the beat was more so like grungy and kind of slow and shit like that. Uh -huh. So he might have just made a connection with like the beat and then just like what I was into. Maybe. Right. Yeah. I don't, I don't know. I've never asked him. Do you know why he changed it from Garrett's Revenge to just Revenge? Did that happen after you guys sort of started having issues or did that happen before? Um, It was before. Okay. It was before. Yeah. He told me. He was like, I'm going to name it Revenge. He was like, because uh, we talked about it and... and I didn't even know he was naming the first one Garrett's Revenge until he put it out and shit like that. Right. Um, but yeah, he wanted to f help like promote the brand and stuff rather than like myself, you know, mm. like at me as a person. He's like, I want to like focus on the brand. I was like, yeah, that shit's fire. Like, I don't care about anything that has to do with me. Like, just go straight for the brand. Did you guys ever have conversations about the brand though did he feel like he of deserved course. to be part owner of the brand or something along those lines um yeah but at the same time i told him was like dude like we have to expand like i have to work by myself too and as much as i love working with you like i didn't want it to look i didn't want people to look at it as merch mm. and i felt like if we were going to continue just doing everything together 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 that it's gonna turn into that and like a lot of people do that and um yeah, we are falling out and shit, man. Like there's, like I said, the main reason why we fell out is because I was going through some personal shit over here. And um, he, of course he was going through some, some shit as well. And um, I feel like we could have handled that situation better, you know? And So um, you think it was related to just you not being around because you were dealing with your own life out here or what was it? A, a lot of it had to do, I, I feel like it had to do with that, but at the same time, I told them too that I wanted to work with like more artists or do more of our own shit and stuff like that, and just not 
be just looked at as like a merch brand and shit. Mm. Yeah. Cause that was one thing about him is that he was super picky about who he wanted to be associated with. Yeah. I remember cause that was the, the time that we were working on doing like singles for no jumper records. Uh-huh. And I actually was like asking him like, yo, like let's get a song for this, blah, blah. blah. And he goes, who else is going to be on it? Yeah. <laughs> I sent him a list of like 10 or 12 people. And he was just like, I only fuck with one of them. <laughs> I'll do it if it's, if he's the only other one associated with yeah. it. And it's like in that moment, I realized like, oh shit, like, you know, I don't know how I'm going to be able to work with you on any kind of music stuff because if yeah. you don't want me fucking with anybody else, then <laughs> like, how how is that going to make sense? You yeah, know? it's funny. We would have like so many arguments too, just based off fucking clothes or just like being friends, being there for one another. And um, I remember we had this one argument. He wanted to make himself as uh i think one of the powerpuff girls and he wanted like oh, his like tats. drawing yeah yeah uh, he wanted to put it on a t-shirt and um he wanted like his tats on fuck who's the green the green powerpuff girl i do not know them by name no i i i, I forgot but, <laughs> you look like you would know <laughs> <laughs> look at the green powerpuff girl he oh. wanted to be he wanted that with his fucking tats and he wanted to put down a shirt and wow. i was like doesn't pump no. <laughs> pump has like a powder puff girl on his face i think that's yeah, like think pretty so. common so. yeah. stuff in the soundcloud era i guess oh but so you you were not into that and did no. he take offense to it of course he did he oh, was like wow. no my shit is fire like you're tripping this is gonna go crazy i was like no i don't like that and yeah. we, we had like a bunch of shit like that and a bunch of arguments but what we did too how we worked together um i was into we were both into like dark shit mm. but he wanted to do more silly or like crazy shit like that. And I, I didn't want to. Right. So we would come to like a middle ground to putting everything together. And then that's what we would put out. That is interesting because like him graphically wanting to do more lighthearted stuff is the yeah. same way that like, you know, him coming out musically, he made a name for himself doing this super aggressive, grimy rap yeah. stuff. And then all of a sudden he's just like, no, I want to make a fucking campfire yeah. album. <laughs> it's like he, he was never OK with just like yeah. doing that. The one thing that he was already popular for, he yeah. always wanted to go to the other extreme and do that as well. Yeah. I think I was like less open to trying new shit like that, too. And I feel like. Yeah, maybe we could have tried that and maybe it would have worked. But um, yeah, it, it was fun. It was fun working with him. Yeah, it's cool. So when he actually sent out that tweet where he said, uh, I no longer support revenge clothing at all. Yeah. What was the conversation like preceding that? Like how, how real did it get behind the scenes before he went out there and did that? Um, so basically like well, personal shit I was going through. It was like a... Um, why I came back to Florida is because uh, my mom, she got diagnosed with cancer. Oh, so um, I came back and just wanted to be there for her. Just I felt like I didn't care about anything. You know, I didn't care about working with anyone. I didn't care about the brand. I, I didn't give a fuck. Mm. And um, him just he also needed me to be there for him, too, because he was going through some shit. And I was like, bro, like I I. I will I'll try, but at the same time, like I don't even want to be here. I don't even want to be doing anything. Like mm. I don't, I don't care anymore. And um, when he put that out, like I had stopped talking to him, and I told him, like, what I was going through, and just how I felt as a person, how I felt like our relationship was, and yeah, he he didn't like it. Mm. And um, but at the same time, both of us were just. We're going through our own shit, you know, so I just wish we could have handled it better. And um, I just wish like I could have told him like one more one more time, you know, that like, thank you. Mm. you know? Yeah, he was like such a, a passionate person. He was so focused on this mission of making this art and like wanting people like his team to be down with him that it was yeah. it was it was hard for him to see that everybody else has their own lives and they have their yeah. own shit that they're dealing with. And yeah. like, your mother getting sick is like for me right now, like if my mom gets sick, like I'm, I, I mean, this business is going to fucking stop moving at yeah. the speed that it's moving right now. I'm going to have to fucking de- devote a huge amount of my time to that. Yeah. How's your mom, by the way? She um, made it through or? Yeah, she's, uh, she still has it. She's been going through chemo and shit. Okay. Yeah. But just trying to help her, whether it's just getting her food every week, like getting her like clean food, um, checking up on her, just... It's it's so hard, you know, mm. because it's still like ongoing and damn. It, yeah, it just I I don't know. <laughs> I mean, prayers up. 
it's still like a daily thing that you're dealing with in terms of just trying to support her and stuff yeah every, every day man like I still battle through the same shit I was going through like three, four years ago. Like right. nothing has really changed because people, I guess people try to say like, okay, the brand's successful. Like you're living good. You're chilling. Like you have so-and-so amount of money. Like all that shit doesn't matter, dude. Like I'm, I still have to worry. I still have to care about all these people around me. Like I, I literally will do anything in my power to make sure that they're straight. Like, I'll switch places with my mom right now. Like, give me the fucking cancer and I'll fucking... Don't, don't worry about me, you know? Mm. You have everything. I'll switch roles, like, ASAP. Damn. Um, it, it's hard to, like, keep a, keep a positive mindset, you know? Because um, it's just so much, like, pain and shit, like, that I've already went through. Mm. And... But that's that's really where you have to find yourself, you know. You have to I feel like there's a reason all this shit is happening. There's a reason why I could I could either give up right now or I could just keep fucking pushing through whatever I'm going through and keep keep doing all this clothing and shit, like help get her better, be there, fucking hang out with her, just do the best I can, be as positive as I can. Because mm. if I'm if I'm not, then I'm literally making the situation worse. That's real shit. Um, okay, so were you so, like, describe what that did to your mental state when he came out and did that tweet. Because at that point, you're probably thinking that my brand is fucking never, my brand's huh. done. Yeah. That starts crossing your mind, I'm assuming. Uh, yeah, and then at the same time, I was just like, fuck it. Uh. Like, now is going to be a real turning point to see who really fucks with us and who is just wearing it just to, like, wear it, you know? Right. So that, like, I'm, I'm happy and like sad like that we had to like cut off each other like that mm. but it i don't know it's it's crazy for me to think about too because like me and him talked maybe less than a week before he passed yeah but there were multiple times where we didn't talk for like many many months yeah and we didn't talk too for many months so you did reconnect before he passed yeah oh okay so how did that conversation come about uh, he wanted me to help him with uh, Bad Vibes Forever with, okay. the, with the new merch. And um, I said I was down. Like, we, we basically, like, squashed everything. And I was ready to work. And then I was just like, fuck, man. I don't know. I don't know if I'm, like, mentally ready to, like, have something. Because when I'm doing something, I'm going to do it 100% or I'm not going to fucking do it at all. Mm -hmm. And I, at that time, too, I couldn't think... I didn't think that I could concentrate like on bad vibes forever, the brand helping him do his own shit too, and then working on revenge at the same time. Mm. Like I just wanted to concentrate on one thing. So were you straight yeah. up about him with that and he yeah. wasn't too happy about it? Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so that was kind of the last conversation? Yeah. That's, I mean, I, the thing I find interesting about that is that you were so willing to be honest about where you were at in terms yeah. of your mental state at that time because, I mean, a lot of people would have you know you you were so honest and, and wanted to just be yourself and you couldn't yeah. imagine yourself really doing something that wasn't you yeah and i didn't want to i didn't want people to say to like your your brand is at uh is where it's at because of x only because of x like no like i put it in the fucking work too like me and him made this shit together like i'm forever grateful to him like helping do all the shit like for his friendship everything like that mm. but at the same time i wanted it to it like it's my <laughs> it's my shit it's like revenge is literally me mm. and um and especially too with my partner han who helps us do uh all the production side without him and uh x like we wouldn't have anything right now and everyone else who's just supporting the fuck out of it and mm. i felt like that was a big turning point to see who really fucked with us and who was just like wearing it to wear it yeah so how did you start going from there because i felt like i started to see you know ski mass rocking it a lot after yeah. you and x fell out because yeah. him and x weren't necessarily on the best terms and it was sort yeah. of like just all of a sudden you had a bunch of different people who yeah sort of just started fucking with you and promoting it and stuff yeah ski just like really everyone else kind of like got what i was saying like how i wanted to just like branch out do shit with like other other artists than just like x and stuff but uh -huh. like x you know and um yeah everyone really supported the fuck out of it and like they're still supporting right now and yeah i was just trying to do more cool shit with artists because a reason why we do so much uh like whether lookbooks or 
collaborations with artists because I'm I'm just so into music. Like I probably love music way more than like designing shit, mm. you know? <laughs> yeah, I mean, the fact that, you know, you've been so consistent in terms of just having all these different artists fuck with you that I mm. would assume for the most part you're not really paying anybody for photo shoots or anything like that is mm -hmm. pretty amazing when you see you know shorelines chief keef all the juice world was repping it crazy hard juice, juice world is crazy dude i i remember i hit him up um when he was like at 90 90k followers or some shit okay and um i had seen him wearing a revenge hoodie and uh I saw him and I DM'd him. I was like, yo, like, if you're ever in LA, like, come to the warehouse. And then he's like, I'm about to be there tomorrow. Right. And then he pulled up, met him. Dude, he had, like, the biggest smile on his face. Like, yes. the first time I met him. And we were just talking about, like, music. He showed me all his songs, fucking playing basketball with each other. And, um, yeah, man, I miss him. That's crazy because, like, Juice World is very much a post-X artist in the sense yeah. that he... I just don't think that his music would have been the same or that his mentality on everything would have mm -hmm. been the same if it wasn't for X's influence on him. And that mm -hmm. even goes down to the clothing. Like, I think mm -hmm. that for him, Revenge was just automatically the coolest brand in the world because mm -hmm. to him, X was the dude who had already accomplished what he was trying to do. Yeah, X, X really put, he kind of set out like a blueprint for like upcoming rappers. Mm. And he was like the first one to make that style or just put more depression and like pain into like his craft you know mm -hmm. and then you saw a lot more um artists like feeling more open to to doing that definitely so was that the only time you got to kick it with juice or you reconnect with him no. a bunch of times yeah a bunch of times went to the studio um i think it was like i saw because you went to the studio right with him a bunch like, of times yeah yeah i think i went before maybe like five six times over there uh -huh. and we just go eat chill um talk about what stuff i'm working on what new music he's working on shit uh i remember one time he made like seven eight songs in like a night and he was that was the first time i've ever seen anyone like do that because like i've been in the studio with x and like ski and shit and they just work on the song like the whole time and <laughs> fucking juicy knocked out eight eight or nine songs like in a couple of hours. That is interesting. Because I've heard that about Ski so many times is that he's such a perfectionist in the studio that yeah. he moves like super slow because every single piece of a bar that he puts down, he wants it to be perfect. Yeah, so yeah. it's a lot different than Juice World, who literally would just belt out whatever the fuck he was feeling at the time. And yeah. then it's like, that's the song. He would just <laughs> keep going, dude. If you didn't like, if you yeah. didn't tell him it's time to go home, like he would just still be in there. <laughs> and it got even crazier too, because then he starts recording in the house. So all of a sudden yeah. it's nothing for you to be in there until 10 in the morning. Exactly. You know? Crazy. Um, how much does, how much do the artists inspire your designs? Because a lot of times, you know, you, you have a big lookbook for your new mm -hmm. stuff and you have certain artists representing it and stuff. Like, where does the inspiration come from you at this point when you've done so many different collections? Is it ever inspired directly for the artists that you actually want to do the lookbook? Uh, not really, but it's, I have to connect with them on, on something, mm -hmm. you know? Whether it's something they're doing or talking about in their songs and shit like that. And, like our our next one is a uh, shoreline mm. and like phoenix and OGZ, i fuck with uh because i'm mexican i fuck with OGZ like off the rip too because he's like one of the very few mexicans who are actually like in the rap flyest mexican holding down the city <laughs> right now right i mean pretty much like because yeah. people people don't necessarily not everybody realizes la is like probably majority mexican so yeah. OGZ is like the fucking dawn yeah, right now yeah. you know yeah shout out OGZ. um so yeah, I really want to Phoenix and as Phoenix, well. Yeah, also yeah. Mexican and doesn't look white. Oh, Jay-Z <laughs> looks white, so he gets like both sides yeah, of that. Yeah. You know. uh, but yeah, having them come through, do the lookbook, that shit was fire, dude. Cause I really think that like, like they represent the city and uh so much of its culture, mm. you know? And I don't feel like there's too many people like that in LA because there's a lot of like fake shit, you know, and they're mm. they're really um they're real. They're real. <laughs> oh, yeah. They're real. I, I mean, it's funny because I sort of knew them like before they were rapping, but uh -huh. I definitely knew a lot of people who knew them before they were rapping because yeah. uh, allegedly they were selling drugs and I know a lot of people <laughs> do drugs. So like I've definitely heard from like certain people who'd be like, man, oh, jeezy. He was taking care of me back in the day. <laughs> I'm like, wow. Now he's taking care of your ears. That's so great. 
Um, so when you look at other brands though that you respect and shit, like what what could you see Revenge getting to the level of you know, I mean, I don't want to even like say Supreme because obviously mm -hmm. Supreme has done like everything that you can mm -hmm. do as a brand. But, you know, do you aspire to have like the dope ass revenge store and oh. a series of stores across the country? Is this the kind of stuff that you think about? Um, I'm always trying to just I'm at like a constant battle with like myself. I'm trying to like outdo what the fuck I did last year, last month, yesterday. Mm -hmm. So I'm always just trying to push myself and outdo whatever the fuck I created, make something harder, get the material and fabric and cut and sew everything like unlock getting shipping faster and shit like that so i i it's like talking about supreme like i respect like all the hard work coming up from just being a skateboard brand to one of the biggest streetwear brands like in the world but i would i wear their shit no but at the same time like you have to respect the hustle and the grind and maybe someday we would want to do like a store or something like that but right now we're really just trying to have like a solid, solid foundation, get everything to where it's running smoothly and um, put in put in the work, you know, because if you're not putting in the work, then you're not going to see like the results like Supreme has had or other brands like fucking awesome and shit mm. like that. Yeah. Yeah, because I mean. It's just the most important thing is that if anything becomes really big overnight, then it's probably mm -hmm. not going to have a long shelf life. Yeah. And when you think about fucking awesome, I mean, I've been knowing about them for like over 10 years. And yeah. It's just been this gradual progression. And that yeah. ultimately is going to help you more than like you've seen so many brands that just hop on every trend. Yeah. And that shit just inevitably sort of kills your brand. Yeah, exactly. I'm just trying to we're in this shit for the long run. Like. And, but at the same time, any any brand could die like overnight or some shit. You saw the shit that happened like Hood by Air, like mm. that shit was done with. Rocky disses it, boom, <laughs> it's gone. Yeah, it's done, <laughs> it's over with. But yeah, we're trying to set up for the long run. But has that ever does that ever occur to you? Because it's kind of like your brand is so rooted in like a specific sort of you know underground mm -hmm. hip hop type world that it's kind of like, well, you never know what's gonna happen within that world because like you've mm -hmm. already seen it. Like two of the dudes who are the biggest stars rocking your shit have just yeah. tragically passed over the last two years yeah and it's like i mean that's just that's fucked that's crazy there's like yeah. so much so many random things that could happen like that yeah i mean i guess it's not like something you can necessarily plan for but it's definitely like do you do you ever worry that like the brand could just sort of start to go downhill because i feel like it's all been up and up like uh -huh. in terms of the brand but does it worry you do you ever feel like maybe you should take it to another level or like you've been too slow to move to that level is there any of that that uncertainty um i'm not not uncertainty like i know it's gonna do good because like whatever i'm putting my mind to i'm gonna make sure it's it's hap like it's going to happen mm. and i'm not gonna let myself just be so content to whatever the fuck it is right now like we're not shit right now we're just not anything not close to where our goals are mm. and we really have to push ourselves more into getting it um like huge but at the same time like not selling out mm. you know how do you guys even promote yourself it's just all your social media it's and just, just instagram people. yeah there's nothing it's basically just instagram yeah <laughs> i mean that's kind of crazy when you think about it because you know, there's just so many brands who dump money into advertising yeah. and shit like that. <laughs> and to just be in a position where your shit does well enough that you don't have to do that is pretty wild. Yeah, there's like no, we don't, we didn't sign, like there's no big corporations backing us. It's just like me and my partner and um, our friends, just like we ship from the warehouse. Like I call my friends to come ship from the warehouse and shit. Uh -huh. I made this the brand with uh, my partner Han and he does all the production side so which leaves me open to do all the designing and concepts and shit like that. Mm -hmm. So it's at the same time man like oh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I just feel like we've yet to um, fully establish ourselves to mm -hmm. where we need to be and our goals you know. Definitely. Um, correct me if I'm wrong Justin Bieber and Drake both had revenge sweatshirts out basically at the same time that your brand really started to catch steam, right? Like that was I, kind I of a weird they, moment. I think they did. Yeah, that's 
I don't know if they did theirs before or after. I remember I just know. thinking, like, this is strange. Like, why is nobody acknowledging how weird it is that Revenge <laughs> is all of a sudden this popular company and then also Justin Bieber has revenge shit yeah, out Yeah, that's such. Good. Yeah, that's crazy. I, I, saw, I saw both those. Yeah. It was just at a time that might have made the brand feel a little odd. Like, oh, so is everybody just going to keep doing Revenge on <laughs> like, our brand name? Yeah, Literally yeah. just our <laughs> brand name on shit? No. <laughs> I don't know. Um, okay, so then X passes. Do you remember where you were when you found out and what the roller coaster of emotions was like? Um, I was in I was in bed. I was at home, and I woke up and I I saw it. I saw it on my phone, and I thought it was like some fucking kids trolling, mm. and I I didn't believe it. And then um, I kind of put my phone down, and then I was like going back to sleep. And then I woke, I woke back up. I was like, "Wait, what the fuck?" And then I checked my phone again, and I was like, "Oh shit, dude! Like, like this shit happened." And then um, I was just like crying and fucking. It it felt so unreal. Like it still feels so, like fake to me. Uh, just, yeah, it's. Uh, I don't know what to say. Did it hurt? In particular, because you felt like you had unresolved issues, like that you guys hadn't been able to get back to where you were previously. Yeah, man. Like, I feel like all I wanted to do is just um, keep him like sane or just be his friend. I felt like I kind of let him down, you know. And yeah, that shit still hurts today. And um, like I said, I wish I could just tell him. Like, thank you for everything, everything you did, man, because mm. it really meant so much. Definitely. Um, and then, like, I just remember that at that time period, it's like there was just a massive amount of, like, a surge in interest in revenge. So mm -hmm. it's like you kind of have to handle the fact that you just lost somebody that you cared about a lot. It was super uh, pivotal in your brand coming together. But then mm -hmm. at the same time, you got to deal with the fact that there's just like an insane amount of attention on the brand and mostly from people who weren't necessarily checked in enough to realize that the brand and X weren't necessarily on the best terms at that moment. Mm -hmm. um, just, just seeing all the kids, like that's when we really got like flooded with a bunch of stuff there. I go like bring back like the kill hoodies or like all a bunch of shit like we did with him. And yeah, we're, we're never going to do that. Like I, I really cherish all those uh, collaborations and cause everything was just so fun like he was just he was fun to work with and um even though we had different like arguments and just we didn't see eye to eye sometimes and shit like that like working with him was one of the best like experiences i've had in my life and um yeah did you go through any time periods there where you were just sort of unsure of exactly what you wanted to keep doing in the face of the fact that X had just passed? Like, was there anything about it that just sort of made you rethink how you were going to handle this? Mm, yeah, that and um, my mom still right. wearing on my mind and shit. So both of that, both of those factors are just like, man, like, is this shit really worth it? Like, I could just stop now. I could just go out, get a fucking job and shit and just live my life regular. But at the same time, I figure you get these situations, like these situations are put in your life for a reason, you know? You could either fucking like put your foot down and say, no, like this isn't gonna happen. I'm, I'm gonna be strong. I'm gonna push through whatever the fuck I need to. I need to reach my goals. I need to be more caring for people around me and shit like that. And it really helped me like value people more and just like love. <laughs> it's hard to like say man no i get you for it's sure just the fact that you know you really have to appreciate the people you have while they're yeah. there and it's like i feel like in i mean peep x etc juice there's just been yeah. so many people that are like super mega talented young people that i had yeah. in my life and that's not even to mention the people that just got locked up for long ass periods of time over the yeah. past few years and it, it does, it shifts your mentality. It's like you feel, I'm lucky to have any of these people around that I yeah. that have around me because I've seen how quickly it gets taken from you. Yeah, I was just so grateful um, for just knowing him, you know, and knowing what type of impact like he had on myself and millions of kids, you know. Mm. Definitely. 
Um, so where do you see the the brand going in the near future? Like, what are the steps that you want to take that are going to make you feel like you're advancing going into 2021, 2022? Like, mm-hmm. like, what do you feel like you need to do to be able to take it to the next level? Um, I think a main thing to a main thing to get us to that next level is like collaborations mm-hmm. and um, just working more like on shipping and fucking um, getting everything right like everything on time drop like say we drop something on Tuesday then it's out Wednesday like mm. ship pack and ship all the shit like that but yeah we have a lot of uh, collaborations coming up and um, it's gonna be the first time we've ever actually tried to work with um, other brands and shit like that so I think that will be a, a big turning point like for the brand no sneak peeks on what brands you uh, want like big, <laughs> bigger brands or brands that are more on your level uh, yeah bigger brands yeah, but uh, yeah, I can't really say too much right now. Interesting. Um, do you think there's any chance that you're gonna like put your face out there more going forward, or is that something you're definitely trying to hold on to? Uh, yeah, I don't. I don't really want to. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I don't think I will. Um, based off the fact, like, like I'm shy too, and even like doing this interview is like hard for me to do. But I want to like challenge myself, you know? Right. Um, but yeah, I. I, I tend to be low-key i think i'm gonna say like that <laughs> yeah definitely is it weird when kids want to get a photo with you like the rare kid who does know who you are and you kind of are like you know i want to but at the same time like um, i'm not really trying to no one has recognized me ever yeah i like we've done pop-up shops for your brand at my store yeah and there's definitely kids in there though that knew who you were or did they just think that you um, you're just one of the employees i i was wearing the mask oh, i was wearing time. a mask yeah the Fuck, whole time okay. yeah so like yeah, no one has seen me yet. <laughs> wow, that's so crazy. Because there's like, you know, like, okay, when I go to the UK, mm-hmm. I interviewed, I don't know, 20 rappers over the course of a few days, and like three or four of them wear masks. Mm-hmm. Like, just because out there, the cops are so gnarly with rappers and shit that it's yeah. like, it's just super dangerous for them to be giving out their identity and shit. It's <laughs> funny because it's like out here, we have clothing, I can think of multiple clothing designers who are on the same thing where they just don't want to put their face out there. Yeah, I just I just don't want any attention like on me. Mm. I just wanted to just be focused on the brand, you know. Definitely. What was uh Lincoln with Chief Keith like that that, that, that was shit? crazy. Was interesting. <laughs> Anything out of the ordinary? That was crazy. Yeah, we went out to his house and um we were just basically talking about video games and shit like that the whole time and I was trying to like he had an issue with his like Mortal Kombat or something. I was just trying to fix it, and we were just talking about all types of shit. But, That's um, interesting because I bought Mortal Kombat, the new one for Switch, yeah. and I didn't really get too <laughs> into it. That's yeah, something something was happening with like his PC where his graphics were like slowing down and shit. That's interesting. He's a Mortal Kombat fan. Yeah, he fucking dude. He has so many. He had like twelve Xboxes like in the living room. What the fuck are you gonna do with twelve Xboxes? You only <laughs> he had need one. So many. He had so many like twelve TVs. Like what the fuck? Yeah. You want some baller shit like that? You you you, you got any like expensive shit just from selling all these clothes, or are you just pretty low key? Uh, just pretty low key. I just have like a PC and shit. PC costs like a fucking thousand dollars. <laughs> that doesn't count. Uh, no. Besides that, no. Damn. Okay. Have you uh so so the money just sits in the bank or you don't you don't really yeah. go too crazy? Yeah, it just it's more to me like it I don't let that kind of like define me mm. cuz I figure that kind of like taints the whole idea and like process behind like the brand and like revenge and shit like that. Like I don't really I don't care too much about that shit. All that shit will happen when mm. whenever it happens. No, I feel that for sure cuz you end up hanging out with too many like rich and successful people and then yeah. all of a sudden you start to think like that there's something good about not just wearing a hoodie and jeans every day. Yeah. And it's like <laughs> you know, it's like I prefer to spend more time around more normal people who yeah. don't feel the need to like reflect how much money they have through their shoes. Yeah. Like that just I don't really feel the need to do that and I don't want to be around people who are doing that yeah that's why i just wear like fucking nike shorts and like sandals and a regular hoodie and shit yeah i don't tend to like dress up or like put on some crazy like louied out like nothing i just i just chill i just i I, because the thing that people don't know if they even wear that shit is it it feels horrible like yeah it's it's uncomfortable (laughs) designing shoes i bought in my life feel fucking awful i had a pair of prada shoes that felt incredible so i do want to shout them out but for the (laughs) most part it's like it really feels like shit like compared to like i'm wearing adidas right now that were probably 100 bucks these feel great yeah 
I don't think there's any designer shoes on earth that feel as good as just like a regular ass pair of Adidas. Or- yeah, I, I played basketball too, so I was a bunch. Um, I would always wear like shorts and sandals all the time. Mm-hmm. Like that's all I knew, so I just kept to that. That's a LA dress code: shorts and sandals. Yeah, facts. Got to do it for like six months out of the year. <laughs> um, all right. Well, hey man, I'm really really happy that we were able to get such a fucking in-depth conversation, especially about something that. You know, I've seen so many people like trying to write about revenge online, trying to summarize uh-huh. and trying to figure it out, but it's all very, very like secondhand information. So it's good that we got a real record I, out I there. I appreciate you too for like giving me the platform to like speak on it too. Oh no, no doubt. I mean, this is the kind of stuff that we definitely want to be documenting. So for sure, you got a Thrasher collab coming. Is that what you're trying to tell uh, us with a hoodie, or are you just a fan? <laughs> no, this is a uh, public ha- public housing uh, skate team. Oh, that's there. Their, their yeah, collab, their, public housing. This is their hoodie. They actually okay. uh, did like a knockoff of Thrasher, and then Thrasher ended up like seeing it and fucking with them. Really? Yeah. Is that gonna work for revenge? Like, if somebody makes some fire revenge bootleg shit, or you're gonna just like hit them up and be like, "All right, let's try it." It, it can. <laughs> it can <laughs> <Could happen>. <laughs> <laughs> That's fire. If you if you could have one uh, performer, entertainer, etc., do like model your stuff or like do some <sighs> kind of collab or whatever, is there anyone in particular that would be like the ultimate goal? Damn. Mm. That's hard. Mm. That's hard as fuck. Uh, let me see. I think I would say 50 Cent. Oh, my God. <laughs> Based off the fact that when I was a little kid, like, I would listen to shit every single day. I'm, like, five, six, buying fucking Get Rich or Die Trying album. That was, like, the first album I ever bought. Right. And then listening to The Massacre and shit like that. Like, yeah, he's he impacted, like, me <laughs> just oh, being so young too huge. i was like 18 when 50 came out and it was just it was like game over like this is the rapper yeah exactly yeah. he put me like he was he almost made me fucking wear do rags and shit when i was a kid <laughs> yeah oh my god a kid came up to us a white kid came up to us at the skate park the other day because we did a interview with this dude 30 deep grimy who always wears a do rag and he, this white kid is just like bro your 30 deep grimy interview is the reason why i wear a do rag <laughs> no like, dude like you you impact a lot of people too like I wear do rags. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> this kid is like, I'm like, you know that the do rag thing is like, they're, they're like cooking up their waves under there. Like, I'm pretty sure your hair getting wavy no matter what you do, buddy. <laughs> yeah, but like, um, the whole no jumper shit, dude. Like, like I said, I would watch your interviews and like Xavier Wolf and then <laughs> X, one. like Suicide Boys and shit. Yeah, that shit, man. it really like inspires kids. You know, mm. it really um, kind of like sets a foundation or just like gives them an inside look at like what they need to do if they want to pursue certain shit like music or clothing and stuff like that i appreciate that i mean like part of the thing about revenge is it has such a like strong brand identity that as soon as i picture 50 cent wearing it it's just (laughs) it feels like i'm picturing like a younger 50 cent like a a real bro 50 cent like he's just straight up he has a different energy in my brain when i picture him rocking it yeah i I probably have to make something like specifically Mm. more so like old for his fucking um like decade (laughs) same exact font as the revenge hoodie but it says g in it (laughs) somebody mock that up for me please i'll take that bootleg (laughs) Uh, shit. All right. Well, Garrett, I appreciate you uh, coming on and definitely look forward to the up and coming changes with the brand and everything you got coming forward, man. Appreciate you. Thank you so much, man. Yeah, appreciate thank you. you. Thanks again. No Jumper, coolest podcast in the world. Check us out on YouTube, SoundCloud, iTunes. Like, comment, subscribe. NoJumper.com if you want support. If you like this interview, go like, comment, subscribe on No Jumper.